of Joel, J-O-E-L, Joel, in case you didn't know that was in the Bible. Turn with us there. Turn there, scroll there, look there, however you do it. Chapter 2, verse 12, from the New International Version, Joel chapter 2, verse 12. If it takes you too long to find it, just look up on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> some of y'all, we'd be here till three o'clock to some of y'all find the book of Joel. Let's... Amen. <laughs> look up on the screen. What verse did I say? Chapter 2, verse 12. <laughs> Hear these words says, even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rend or tear your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love, and relents changes from sending calamity here it is who knows <laughs> he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing grain offerings and drink offerings for the lord your god may i read that again because I, I i think if you if you hear this i won't have to say a whole lot even now declares the lord Return to me with all your heart, with weeping, fasting, and mourning. Tear your heart, not your clothes. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? <laughs> I love that. You, 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 you aren't catching it. Is that right? Who knows? He may turn, relent, and leave behind a blessing. Amen. I want to talk about the key to a turnaround. The key to a turnaround. The prophet finally has the undivided attention of the people of God. He finally has it. He didn't have it for a long time. They were ignoring the word of God. The prophet declared, what thus saith the Lord. The people of God weren't paying any attention to it. It was like a warning light on the dashboard of your automobile saying it's time for an oil change and you keep looking at it keep on driving believing nothing's gonna happen it was a warning light and they they just ignored the word of God until finally the automobile broke down on them now the prophet has the collective attention of the people of God. It took some tragedy. It took some adversity. But sometimes it takes that for God to get our attention. Nations that had not thought about God will start turning toward prayer and spiritual things in the midst of adversity. Churches filled up after 9-11. Mm -hmm. Article May 22nd, 2013, columnist in USA Today speaks of the fact that in this nation, people have a tendency to turn toward God when there's trouble. Mm -hmm. Right after the horrible tornadoes in Oklahoma there in 2013, 
churches filled up in the area. And after the, 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 the terrible mass shootings in Sandy Hook, governor of Connecticut stands up and says, we will now turn to what we should have been relying on all the time, and that is our faith in God. People have a tendency to turn toward God in the midst of adversity. So it was in the book of Joel with the people there. The, the prophet now had their attention because they were suffering from a national catastrophe. <laughs> Help me preach. They, 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 they had been ignoring the word of God. They had no time for God until they experienced this tragedy of swarms and armies of locusts coming in and devouring their crops, devouring their very livelihood. This is what was an agronomous culture, and this is what they depended on. But now the locusts had come. Now the pests had come. And the prophet, the prophet eloquently puts it like this. He said that, 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 that what the palmer worm did not destroy, the locusts have destroyed. And what the locusts have not destroyed, the canker worms have destroyed. And what the canker worms have not destroyed, the caterpillar has destroyed. He compares this swarm of locusts to a great military army which has covered all of the land. And now the people's attention has turned toward God. Oh, somebody ought to hear me there. While, while everything was going all right, they had no time for God. And that's why the prophet sees in this invasion of pests, he sees more than a natural disaster. He sees that these pests, these locusts are actually messengers from heaven who's bringing a word to the people of God. They are preaching a sermon that says God is serious about your disobedience. You know God can speak through anything. God is not bound to the preacher. I feel something happening here on Sunday morning. Shakespeare was right that God can invest sermons in the stones. God can speak to us and preach to us through anything or anyone. And the prophet sees what other people can't see. Everybody else just sees a swarm of locusts. Everybody else just sees a natural disaster. But the prophet sees the hand of God working in history. The prophet has to see what other people can't see and see beneath and see beyond what everybody else sees. He says that God is trying to get our attention. And I guess you know that God specializes at getting our attention. Please wake your neighbor up. I said God specializes. If, 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 if his word doesn't work, he has some other means. He has some other methods of getting our attention. If, if preaching doesn't work, he, he knows what to send your way. I wonder if I'm, am I looking at anybody here? Has God ever had to wake you up? I mean, out of your rim spiritual drowsiness and sleepiness has God ever had to tap you on the shoulder through adversity through trouble you didn't know what the meaning of it when you went through it but you look back and you see how God was simply trying to get your attention because he has something to say to you so now the prophet ah, has the undivided attention of the people and there, because of what they're going through, because of these pests, because of these locusts, they stand in need of a turnaround. Here it is. They, they've, they, they've gone through a bad season. They've been in a bad year. They couldn't blame nobody. They brought it on themselves. But whether they brought it on themselves or somebody else brought it on them, they were going through a bad season. I wonder, have you ever been there? I mean, have you ever been through a season that you wanted to forget? Have you ever been through a year that you wanted to forget? Look, look, looks like I'm in the wrong crowd here, but have you ever been through three or four months that you wish had never occurred? Has anybody here ever stood in need of a, a, a turnaround? I mean, what it seems like, if it wasn't one thing, it's another. If it's not the palmer worm, it's the locust. If it's not the locust, it's the canker worm. If it's not the canker worm, it's the caterpillar. Pests are destroying. Seems like everything that comes up, somebody is taking it. Somebody is destroying it. Have you ever felt the need for a season of turnaround? 
Well, here were the people of God, and they found themselves in that season. And while they were in that season that they brought on themselves, the prophet speaks. The word speaks. Crops not growing, but the word speaks. Economic downturn, but the word still speaks. Some of them not knowing where the next meal is coming from. But the word still coming forth. The locusts could put, out, put their crops out of business but couldn't put the word of God out of business. The pest could destroy what they had. But the pest could not destroy the word of God. I'm glad on today that the word of God has a way of coming forth even when I find myself in dire circumstances. His word cannot be put out of business. So I have news for you. Even when you find yourself in that kind of season, keep your ears open. Look like I'm alone in here. Keep your ears open for what God may say. Keep your ears open for what God, because God always has an alternative word. And the alternative word might be the authoritative word for your situation. Always keep, I mean, just lost my job. Keep my ears open. Get, just, just got a bad report from the doctor. Keep your ears open. Just lost my loved one. Keep your ears open. I mean, keep your ears open because none of what you're going through has put the word out of business. His word still speaks. I mean, just because I'm going through what I'm going through, his word still says the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I mean, just because I'm going through what I'm going, his word still speaks. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall, just because I'm going through what I'm going, his word still speaks. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. None of that is out of business just because the pests have destroyed the crops. And so for those... And maybe this word is not relevant for you right now, but your neighbor sitting next to you may be in need of a turnaround right now. You don't know what they're going through, so just uh, amen for their sake. Somebody here is in need of a turnaround. The people of God were in need of a turnaround. And here's what the prophet says. He says that I have a word for you. And in this word, there is first of all a call to genuine repentance. He said, okay, it's not going to shout you, but... If you're in need of repentance, uh, rather, if you're in need of a turnaround, then maybe you need to repent. Okay, hold up. I know we don't like that word. It's not popular. Because in most gospel, most, most preaching nowadays and most gospel music, the aim is to make us feel good. It's to feel better. Feel better. Feel. Everything's about feeling. Get your praise on so you can feel better the prophet said don't don't focus on feel better focus on be better and if you focus on be better it might lead to feeling better is it, it, it this 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 is the message of the gospel he says i'm coming at you with a word that says i want you to be better He said, I, I, I appreciate you wanting me, but right now, you don't need a massage. You need surgery. The reason why you got to keep getting massages is because something's wrong on the inside, which requires an invasive procedure, and, and you just want therapy. But some things that we want therapy for really require surgery. Can I get help over here? He, he says, the word I'm bringing to you today is an invasive procedure which will take out the cancer from your spiritual soul. You, you need to repent. He <laughs> says, it says, I need you to repent. Look at the word. Look at, look at the word. It, it, it shouts me beyond belief. He says, even now. See, we don't know when to shout. But I just told you that they were in the midst of dealing with the consequences of their own disobedience. Even now. Mm-mm, y'all missing me. They, they, they thought it was all over, that they had ignored the warning lights, and now they were having to deal with the consequences even now. 
Can I tell you what even now says? Even now says, Lord, Lord is saying, I should have given up on you. But there's something in me that refuses to give up on you. Even now, when I should turn my back on you, even now. Can I tell you what even now means? Even now means it's not too late. That's the gospel. That, that's the message of the gospel. That I don't care how many pests have destroyed your crops. It is not too late. I don't care how many years you've turned your back on God. It is not too late. I don't care how long you've distanced yourself from the presence of the Almighty. It is not too late. You have to rebuke the enemy in your head that says you can't make a turnaround. I don't care how long you've been where you are. How long you've been going through what you've been going through. It's not too late for a turnaround even now. Come on, come on. Somebody has to talk to the enemy right now who speaks to you and says you are too far gone. Your situation is too far gone. You've been out there for too long. Look at him and say, you a liar. I serve a God who says even now. I serve a God who confronts me with the present even when the past is still messing with me. He says our God is a God of now. I feel my help here. Come on, come on. Touch somebody. Tell him he's a God of now. I, 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 I've dealt with some pain, but he's a God of now. I've, I've been through the fire, but he's a God of now. Even now, I have a word for you. <laughs> I don't have to go any further than that. He says, even, even now. He says, I need you to come back to me. Because in your prosperity, see, see he says, he said, a prosperity is okay with me. God says, matter of fact, I've sent the prosperity to you, but y'all don't know how to live with prosperity. He said, it causes your heart to grow cold. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the people in the text. He says, he says you, your, your heart has grown cold. You've distanced yourself from me. You've turned away from me. Therefore, I need you to turn to me with all of your heart. With all your heart, with all your heart. For the Hebrew, watch it, the heart was not necessarily the seat of the emotion, it's the seat of the will. Most of us associate the heart with emotion. That's why we say, I'm broken hearted. When something has hurt you, when something has broken you, we talk about being broken hearted. For the Hebrew, the heart is not the seat of the emotion, it's the seat of the will so the lord says you turning to me you turning back to me cannot be based on your emotion it has to be based on a choice that you make volitionally in your will because if you make decisions of faith based on emotion, they will only last as long as you feel the way you feel. You got to make some choices, I'm preaching here, based on the volition of your will. So even if I don't feel like it, I'm going to still read his word. Even if I don't feel like it, I'm coming to church. Because if you only come to church when you feel like it, that might be once or twice a month. You got to make decisions based on your will. If I turn toward the Lord only based on the fact that I feel guilty, what's going to happen when you no longer, can I get help right through here, when you, when you no longer feel, I got to make certain decisions just because they are right. Not just because I'm feeling a certain kind of way. I'm going to get up in the morning and the feeling going to be gone. <laughs> I got to know how to make choices based on my will because of what I know. Turn to me with your heart. Now, hold up. Hold up. Turn to me with your Do you know what it means to repent? In the original language, it means to go back to the place of your original departure. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Did you hear me, Mike? It says, to, I don't want you to go to a new place, but to the place of your original departure is where I want you to go back to. Because some of us can't remember days when we had a little more fire for the Lord. Some of us can remember some days 
Come on, when nobody had to beg you to come to Bible study. Some, some of us can remember some days where everything that was needed, I was volunteering and wanting to be a part of the ministry of the church, but somehow or another, life has quenched the fire that I had. I need to go back to the point of my original departure. I hear right now the writer of Revelation telling me to go back to your first love. Go back, well, I mean, to the love. Come on, the love you had for the Lord a long time ago. The fire you had a long time ago. He says, I need you to go. Go back there with all your heart. Oh, God. He says, go, go back. I need you to repent. Now, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, why is the prophet talking about spiritual stuff when the people just need some crops? I, I mean... I mean, all they need is um, for the, the pests to be eliminated. But the prophet doesn't talk to them about some new pest control substance that's on the market. Y'all not hearing me. He goes to the root of the issue because for him, the problem is not crops. There's a spiritual problem that's underneath their economic problem. You don't hear me. Most psychologists, most sociologists, most philosophers, and even some theologians simply deal with the crops. But never get to the bottom, which can I tell you, not all the time, but at the bottom of some of your financial issues, it's not that you're a bad money manager, but there's some spiritual stuff. Maybe if I would tithe, the Lord would open up the windows of heaven so that no, much, no matter how much I'm making, I must still have problems making ends meet because there's a spiritual problem. Maybe the fact that I can't sleep at night has nothing to do with I need a new sleeping pill. There may be some spiritual issues that I need to deal with. God. <laughs> I've been saying amen to myself all week long because I anticipated this kind of response. I want to tell you that at the bottom of some of our surface stuff are spiritual issues. And as long as we don't deal with the spiritual issues, we'll always be finding a way to manage our problems instead of solving our problems. A whole lot of us are great managers, but we're not solving anything. I'm sorry. Anybody in need of a turnaround? I says, anybody here in need of a real genuine turnaround? He said, I, I want to call you, first of all, to genuine repentance. Push on, preacher. He, he said, this call to genuine repentance is based on a gracious recognition. What's the gracious recognition? He said, I want you to repent based on God's character. Return to the Lord your God. Why? Verse 13. For he is. That's enough. I don't even have to know what he is. He just is. Look, look, look. We don't, we, we don't repent. We don't make a turnaround. We don't change because we're scared of God. It's not a matter of what will happen to me if I don't turn to God. It's, it, it's a matter of what won't happen to me if I don't turn. If, look, look, we turn to God, so says Romans chapter 2 verse 4, that the goodness of God leadeth to repentance. That our reflection on how good God is ought to want me to turn back to God. That's enough right there. Well, tell me who he is. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, the prophet says he is. What is he? He's gracious. Please wake up, y'all. He, he's gracious. In other words, he, he blesses me with what I don't deserve. He's compassionate. That is, he feels good while he's doing it. <laughs> he's slow to anger. Oh, we don't know what I said. He's slow to anger. Somebody all say, thank you, Lord. He's slow to we get on each other's nerves quickly it takes a long time to wear God out he's slow to 
anger. Let me say it the third time. He's slow to anger. Let me say it the fourth time till you get it. He's slow to anger. Let me say it the fifth time for this crowd. He's slow to anger. He, he, what is it? He, he's gracious. He's compassionate. He's slow to anger. He's abounding in love. That means his love keeps on pouring out. It keeps on overflowing. What is he? He's abounding in love, and then he's merciful because sometimes he changes what he was going to send your direction. That, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, he, he relents in sending calamity your way. Now, based on the fact that God is gracious, based on the fact that God is compassionate, based on the fact, oh, yeah, that God is abounding in love, based on the fact that he's slow to anger, based on the fact that he relents in sending calamity your way and that he's merciful, you ought to want to turn to somebody like that. <laughs> Now, 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 hold on, hold on. What, what, what the prophet does, stay right there, is he catalogs the characteristics of the creator. <laughs> but it's not exhaustive. Oh, Jesus, keep me near the cross. It's not exhaustive, meaning this ain't all that God is. He, yet, he's also a God of justice. He's also a God of holiness. I'm about to come get you. He's also a God of righteousness. Come on, he's also a God of judgment. But you see, the people don't need that God right now. Watch it. So the characteristics that are accentuated in this text are the ones that best suit the current emergency. I got one sister who got it. You, Look, it, 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 these are the characteristics that best suit the current, it, the current emergency is that these people need to know that God still loves them. They need to know that it's not too late for them. So God has a way of manifesting for you what you need in a certain season. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Whatever you need him to be in a certain season is what God, give me strength, Lord, will be in that seat, in that seat. He knows, how, look, if I have a problem with my knee and I'm in the hospital, I don't need a neurologist. I need an orthopedic to come in and see me. God knows what to be for you depending on what the injury is. depending on what the emergency is. And he doesn't have to send anybody else in to see you. He just, he's the one person, he is Jehovah. And he becomes what you need in a certain, let me preach this thing. It, it, look, when, when I'm in a season of need, he's Jehovah Jireh. When I'm in a season of strife and I need peace, he's Jehovah Shalom. When I'm in a season where I need to be healed, he is Jehovah Rophe. When I need leadership, he is Jehovah Roha because he knows what to be in a certain, is there anybody here? Has God ever been for you? What you needed in a certain season? Somebody's needed him to be a doctor in a sick room. Somebody has needed him to be a bridge over troubled water. Somebody has needed him to be a water in dry places. Somebody has needed him to be a walking cane when you're feeble. God will be whatever you need in a certain Oh, bless his name. I said, bless his name. I said, bless his name. In that season of heartbreak, he's been a heart fixer. In that season when your mind was messed up, he's been a mind regulator. I'm so glad that God knows what to be in certain seasons in life. <laughs> he says, turn to God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave you. Based on who he is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He says, he says, he's right there. He says I'm, I'm calling you to genuine repentance. And the genuine repentance to which I'm calling you is based on a gracious recognition of who God is. But this genuine repentance to which I'm calling you is also based on the possibility of a generous reward. <laughs> oh, God. He, he says, I want you to turn to God. Why? Turn to him um, because of who he is. I'm certain about who he is. Then I want you to turn to him because of the possibility of what he might do. 
Now, I'm clear and certain on who he is. I'm not exactly sure what he might do. So I'm only going to promise you who he is. But I can't promise you what he's going to do. You know we need to stop lying to people. Especially when, when we go visit the sick. We promise them, we claim, I'm going to claim healing over your life. And I'm going to promise you that God's going to do this. Listen, you can't promise what God's going to do. The best thing you can do is promise who he is. And who he is, there are some things he might do. Oh, my God. That, that, look, look, look. He says, he says I'm going to promise you who he is. He is gracious. He is compassionate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then he is slow to anger. And he is abounding in love. And he may change the direction of what he's going to send you away and that he's merciful. And, and, and he says, who knows? <laughs> he, he, says, he says, turn to him. Because who knows what he might do? Stay right there. Stay right there. It's, it's a, who knows what God might do? Turn to him because he'll turn to you. As you turn to him, he turns to you. He's waiting for you to turn to him because he can't wait to turn your direction. Because when he turns your direction, everything he has comes with him. And so he turns your direction. He says, who knows? The same God who visited you for the sake of correction and judgment may leave behind a blessing. He said the same, he said, you don't know what God is going to leave behind when you turn to him. They, 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 they needed their crops to be improved. They needed their agricultural situation to be improved. And, and the prophet is saying, you don't know what the Lord may do. He's come your direction, I know, for the sake of correction. He's come your direction for the sake of judgment. But if you turn to him, you don't know what he's going to leave behind. He said he may leave enough blessing behind to take care of you, and then you can take care of him. Because what he's going to do is leave enough for you to give your grain offerings and your wine offerings. You don't hear me. He, he says this right here, that, that, that when the Lord is in your presence, you don't know what the Lord is going to leave behind. When he comes through the sanctuary, you don't know what he's going to leave behind. That's why it pays to be in the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence, uh, mm, mm, in the presence of the Lord, there's the fullness of joy. Do I have a witness here? That's why you want to be where God is. Because where God is, he may leave behind some stuff you weren't even anticipating. I was in church today and he left behind some joy. I was in church today and he left behind some peace. See, I was in church today and he left behind some guidance. See, the reason you want to turn to the Lord is because he may leave behind some grace and mercy. Is there anybody here who knows that he is a God of grace and mercy? and mercy and when you turn his direction you might be the recipient of both grace and mercy do i have a witness here well well, well now let me tell you this uh, as i go on toward my seat I, it was probably i don't know had to be about the sixth fifth or sixth grade and and where i grew up in columbus ohio in the 1970s it was a pretty much uh, a segregated area <laughs> There was one street that divided a predominantly black neighborhood from a predominantly white community. There was one road between us called Nelson Road. Mm -hmm. I lived on one side of Nelson Road. And, and we were not supposed to ride our bikes to the other side. As a matter of fact, Mama said, you can ride your bike all on this side, but don't cross that line to go to the other side. That was the word that was spoken to us. In addition to that, uh, the police on the other side would randomly stop us if we went over there riding our bikes, asking us if we had, quote, unquote, a bicycle license. So one day we decided that we we're going to cross the road my brother and I and go to the other side and ride our bikes well while we were over there we spotted the police and simultaneously they spotted us we looked at the police and we knew we had to rapidly get out of the neighborhood because we didn't have a bicycle license well as we were making our way back to our neighborhood about to cross the street 
guess who we saw? We saw my mother, Gloria Carter Cruz and Nelson Rose, evidently looking for us. So I looked at my brother, he looked at me. He said, we got two choices. We can go back to the police in this neighborhood, or we can go in the direction of mama. I said, who knows? What might happen if we go in the direction of mama? If we go in the opposite of direction, we know what's gonna happen. But if we go in the direction of the one who loves us, we don't know what's gonna happen. So we made our way back to our neighborhood. Mama saw us and said, meet me at home. We didn't know what was waiting for us at home, but we went home anyway. When we got home, I said when we got home, we didn't get the usual corporal punishment. We didn't get the usual what we would typically get. She just kind of fussed us out for a while. Now that's what I call mercy, is when you don't get what you deserve to get. Wait a minute. On that night, she called us down to the dinner table. When we got to the table, it was full of food. You don't hear me. When we went to bed, we had a warm, comfortable place to sleep. Good night, church. And may the Lord bless you real good. But that's what I call grace. Mercy yeah, is when you don't, don't get uh, what you deserve to get. Uh, grace uh, is when you do get what you don't deserve to have. Uh, every now and then, uh, you got to know how to turn to the Lord. Uh, because who knows? I said, who knows? God may give you grace and mercy. Is there anybody here who doesn't know which direction to go in? God will give you grace and mercy. Looks like I got the wrong crowd, but do I have any brothers here has been the recipients of grace and mercy? Do I have any sisters here who've been the recipients of grace and mercy? Turn to your neighbor and grab them by the hand and tell them you're looking at, you're looking at grace and mercy. You're looking at grace and mercy. Had it not been for the grace of God, I would have been done a long time ago. Had it not been for his mercy, I would have been finished. Somebody ought to open up your mouth and just tell him thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for turning back to me. Thank you for giving me another chance. Thank you for your grace. Grace, grace that woke me up this morning. Grace that started me on my way. Grace that put running in my feet and clapping in my hands. Grace, grace that pleased my case. Mercy that pleased my case. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Turn to him. Turn to him. Who knows what he might leave behind? Go in his direction. Who knows what he may leave behind? The key to a turnaround is repentance. It's to turn toward him. It's to go back to the place of your original departure. Isn't that something? The place from which you departed. Go back there. Go back. You don't know, because God is just waiting there. He's just, he's just waiting. He said, I'm waiting to turn to you. You turn to me. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. 